Hello everyone, welcome to yet another interesting audio gear review. So today for review I've got Fio K9. Yep, another version of K9 uh, and this time it's actually killer K9. Uh, I'm a bit now lost in Fio's uh, lineup because they recently announced their new flagship model K19, if I remember correctly. It's more expensive and they have K9 Pro two versions with uh, uh, Asahi Kasei chip, but it's was, it was limited and as, I, as far as I understand it's not in production. And K9 Pro ESS. Then they released the K9 without Pro suffix for $500 and the K9 with Bluetooth for 530 or something like that. And now they decided uh, to release one K9 non-Pro version that will like clean up the market for them. So they took the pro version uh, and uh, do some tweaks and added uh, there that uh, famous uh, Asahi Kasei uh, AK4499EX chip. We, and they've reintroduced all features of the pro version in this regular one. They've uh, added Bluetooth and that uh, uh, USB connector from the side to conveniently connect your a smartphone or something like that. So as you can see, it's pretty big box. Looks as usual stylish, but the most pleasant side here is uh, the price. It costs five hundred thirty dollars, but actually for now it's just five hundred on the AliExpress, and for that price you're getting a desktop uh, digital tonal converter with uh, top-notch chip. You're getting THX triple A amplifier that is capable of delivery. 2000 milliwatts for 32 ohms max and uh, if I remember right 700 milliwatts for 300 ohms so powerful with uh, Bluetooth protocols with all that stuff that we are used and uh, I think in terms of value it's really killer thing as usual links will be in the description let's have a closer look so as you can see outer package is also typical for the feel uh, also there was a handy outer transport box made of recycled cardboard with plastic handle but inside we're getting this nice stylish foiled box so let's open it there is a warning about setting proper voltage and on top we having manual here is the device itself so let me remove this plastic bag let's put it here for a while and in the box, I suspect, set of accessories is also pretty familiar and traditional. So... Some kind of warranty card. This plastic stand if you want to... Uh, to put it vertically on your table, then USB cable, adapter for uh, for 6.3 millimeters, extra fuse, some rubber self gluing uh, feeds for this device, and you can see you having six, so two will be spare, and the power cable for it. So accessory set is. Pretty expectable, but you're getting basically everything you, you need and a bit of extra on top of that. So here is the device itself. It's uh, pretty compact, but at the same time it's pretty heavy. So really solid metal chassis and uh, probably solid uh, transformer inside. And uh, also familiar field design. You can see that all their ideas with edges and bevels are in place. So here is a front panel. Here we have uh, two outer single-ended output 6.3 millimeter 
full pentacon balanced output and the four pin XLR for your full size headphones. Also here is volume selector, it's not encoder here, it's a potentiometer with really nice and smooth rotation, but here used hybrid uh, volume regulation schema, typical for few products, so no channel imbalance or things like uh, noise when you're rotating the knob. Then selector of the output, PO it's uh, phones output, headphones out, preamplifier and line out, it's some uh, exit uh, exits or outputs for uh, connecting to external amplifier. The difference is that in line out mode there will be fixed uh, frequency in the preamplifier, free, uh, sorry not frequency of course volume, volume will be changeable. Three levels of gain, low, medium and high, then button to select input and the button that you hold and it works as on off uh, and short press is just mute the signal and the different LEDs indicating output. So USB, optical, coaxial, line and Bluetooth. So nothing on the bottom besides this uh, toggle that we have a warning. On the rear side we getting power input with main power switch, then uh, socket for fuse, then inputs uh, Bluetooth anten antenna and it's not replaceable here, so don't break it. Coaxial input, optical input and USB. Also there is a line in and you can see there is a separate balanced line in, so you connect your players with Pentacon connectors if they properly implemented here. And also you have single-ended line out and balanced line out to uh, XLR connectors. On the side we are getting uh, some kind of ventilation for heat dissipation and here is the extra USB input that is convenient to connect smartphone or something like that. So let's give power, turn it on, there is a relay click inside and if we press and hold the button it will turn on and here it's in USB input mode, waiting for the signal. But like pressing the buttons, we can change it, for example, to Bluetooth. And there is a pretty dim but uh, still visible multicolor LED indicator around the knob, also typical feature of uh, FIO products. So familiar design, familiar great build quality, lot of inputs, outputs, everything that we can expect here. So traditionally it can be controlled via FIO control application by Bluetooth connection. So you can see the picture of product, uh, then uh, selected uh, Bluetooth codec, uh, selected resolution, also here we have settings. Uh, Bluetooth version, you can set custom device name, upgrade firmware, restore settings and so on. So actually do we have any upgrade? Most likely we don't. So now it's back to updating status. So you can activate USB audio 1.0, it's convenient to use with some uh, gaming consoles and old equipment that uh, uh, does not understand uh, the, the modern UAC 2.0. You can select uh, uh, status indicator, you can turn it off, select default where it's changing color depending on the signal, or you can select multicolor gradients. Also you can select uh, what uh, Bluetooth codex you'd like to use and disable the ones that you don't need. So you can see that it has support aptX HD, aptX adaptive, LDAC, so nice set of codecs and you can select uh, input source. Also here there is an equalizer, I won't uh, be describing it in details, it's typical equalizer as we see in a lot of few products uh, in the past. Then audio, here you can select channel balance and select low pass filter, the, what, uh, the one you'd like to use. And the guide, it's bilingual, Chinese and English simultaneously, but it can give you a quick idea of uh, how things work here. 
As you can see, nice set of basic controls, pretty convenient uh, to use interface. And of course about the sound, and to be honest, nothing to expect here, so if you take a really good digital tone off converter, combine it with good amplifier, add on top of that nice set of inputs outputs, uh, good uh, chassis, so you're getting a great device. And actually a regular K9 was good, K9 Pro was good, and I'd say that K9 AKM combines both of uh, best of both worlds and first of all we getting that uh, signature representation of the digital tone of converter chip used here and great amplification helps to control everything. So uh, base is linear, uh, it has slight emphasis on the impact uh, but uh, not too much, just to make it like more fancy and more uh, enjoyable. So uh, Sabre version is slightly more natural in this aspect, with more focus on the small nuances. Here you're also getting good amount of small details, good sense of realism, but at the same time bass is a bit emphasized in terms of punchness and that sounds uh, more engaging and uh, pretty musical. It goes to the maximum depth and uh, also it's really great in, ma in macro dynamics, but at the same time that uh, texturing and uh, uh, amount of weight representation, it's all here and it's uh, delivered really well. And let's see the examples. First one is Amber Rubars, uh, Strife. Uh, as you can see, I connected uh, my player via Bluetooth, but it's he just uh, for demonstration purposes here in the video. In, uh, in practice, I used the uh, MacBook as a transport and of course tested USB connection. So, Amber Rubars, Strive, nice good instrumental thing, really perfectly recorded with interesting uh, percussions that sometimes hitting pretty deep and requiring a lot of uh, that uh, small nuances to sound uh, realistic and this digital tone converter delivers it uh, really well so sound sound really engaging and like uh, 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 putting you into this atmosphere of live record and just a good regular bass line it's Juno Rector Shine a uh, lot of uh, nice bass, but at the same time not overemphasized, uh, not like regular bass that tries to push your brain out through nose trills, but uh, more sophisticated and interesting bass lines that build the foundation for the rest of the track. And with uh, such electronic music it also sounds really great. But actually low frequencies here are totally universal, they will sound great with virtually everything. Mid frequencies are like uh, really matching the name Velvet Sound that AKM uses. Uh, they are detailed, they have good resolution and so on, but it's not super focused, focused on the micro contrast and not trying to be absolutely technical, instead it's trying to be more dynamic, uh, more musical and uh, a bit uh, enriched in, in terms of note weight. So it sounds uh, not like monitoring and uh, dryer like Sabre try to do and Fio has uh, had to compensate Sabre sound with uh, slightly boosted dynamics. Here you're getting more musical representation, slightly warmer. Uh, it's not warm, it's just warmer than Sabre version. Sounding really great, especially on re uh, greatly recorded tracks, with vocal sounds really engaging with a lot of instruments and stuff like that. So basically, you know, selecting between the two devices is more genre dependent, but about the compressions we'll talk later. Stage is really good, well built, slightly less wide compared to the Sabre version, but a bit deeper and with uh, better depth layering, uh, at least to my ears. Really great emotion representation and they are even highlighted, so to sound like even more romantic and gauging and so on. 
So I've selected first of all, I selected a Massafer Median, superb atmospheric track with guitars, with a lot of different sound effects, uh, and this digital tone of converter is and uh, or uh, actually deck amp combo it's really great uh, in, for such music it gives you that sense of epicness uh, sense of atmosphere and uh, sounds really engaging but at the same time technical enough to give you like distorted guitars and stuff like that and second example track it's uh, Danny Elfman blue strings so as name of the track suggests it's mostly a string part in famous serenade schizophrana and a uh, lot of different uh, string instruments all with their nuances and details and uh, this uh, digital tonal converter represents them nicely with good emotions and treble you know it's hard to explain but it's like um, really great i like it more than saber version but it's more of subjective taste it's uh, like uh, more balanced it's uh, detailed really detailed with uh, pretty surprisingly decent layering and high overtone saturation but at the same time it's not sharp it's not uh, super forward it's not trying to add more uh, energy when it's not necessary so a uh, slight difference with ESS, ESS is a bit more airy and slightly more forward in terms of treble representation, while this one keeps treble more in place. And uh, still really good uh, representation, not of course uh, top-notch level, but uh, for this price it's like really really good results with almost all details of that rich uh, tra treble. Really wonder how the new K19 sounds. First example, it's uh, Everwake by Anathema, and it's like classical Anathema of last 15 years or so. Uh, sophisticated keyboard, uh, guitars, no hard music, no distortion, no doom metal. It's fun to compare like uh, modern Anathema with their first albums. Uh, like it seems like absolutely other band but here we having vocal and lot of stuff that goes with overtones to the treble area and uh, it plays them nicely and another track my favorite scorpions album actually the only album i really like Yellow Butterfly is really experimental and uh, except of Klaus main vocal, uh, this track doesn't sound like anything Scorpions ever did and I like it. It's not superbly recorded and it's not super um, like saturated with treble, but we have here percussions, we have a lot of uh, airy guitars and all that uh, represented really nicely and enjoyable. In terms of pairing, it's pretty much universal, so even pretty tough to drive models. 2000 milliwatts may be not super powerful, but more than enough for the vast majority of headphones. And uh, on the other end, on the low uh, gain, and uh, uh, it's also have a nice uh, black background, meaning almost absent uh, background hum with sensitive earphones except maybe some super sensitive ones but actually even with them it's uh, on the pretty low level speaking about the comparisons actually uh, in my opinion it overperforms regular k9 both in terms of sound it's uh, more rich here and uh, its uh, real competitor is actually k9 pro i'm i think that fio will discontinue it in some near future because or maybe actually uh, release some version of K9 I, because you know I think they are almost on par with K9 Pro except of uh, power and other stuff like that you're getting the same set of features and uh, like almost uh, close level of sound while uh, ESS version of K9 Pro is more focused on the 
micro contrast, more technical, more spacious in terms of stage. But here you're getting a bit of uh, bit more warm sound with more musical representation, and it's you know totally a matter of preferences. So subjectively, I'd select it for like pop music, especially if we speaking about like 80s or 90s pop music, not the modern one. Uh, for the instrumentals, for the instrumental music, for classical music. Uh, for jazz, for different audiophiliac records, uh, for electronic music, and uh, I'd select K9 Pro with ESS version for heavy metal or something uh, or other genres if you prefer like uh, really analytical representation. But uh, honestly, in uh, majority of times, I like this sound a bit more. So. Fio released really great device with superb value. I can easily recommend it to everyone if you want to get one device and for not the super high price and close all your necessities. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and have a great day.